Hi, I'm Erin McKenzie, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Lab 2, which is going to be nutrient auger and nutrient broth preparation. And so I have included a video uh, from YouTube so you can kind of see how plates were poured, but I'm going to use my kitchen to do a makeshift lab on how you would do this in the lab situation. So first off, the first thing that you know is we got to practice aseptic technique. So in doing so, you'll notice that first off, I've got rings on my fingers, which I shouldn't have on my fingers, so I'm going to remove my rings, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and pull my hair back, because as you know, if you have long hair, you're supposed to pull your hair back. So just a couple of things to make sure we're being as aseptic as possible, okay? Now, the other thing that I've done, I've got all of my stuff set out on my table here, and I'm going to go ahead and sterilize my lab bench as you would do if you were in a lab situation. So once I have gotten my lab bench nice and clean, and of course for this particular lab, since I'm at home, I'm using just some Clorox bleach that you would use whatever disinfectant you had in your lab, okay? So now that I've got that done, I'm gonna move that out of the way, and I've already washed my hands, and so now I'm prepared to start my lab. Now, the first thing that you have to understand is when we're making nutrient auger and nutrient broth, just like anything else, there is a recipe on the actual powdered medium. So if you look at the medium, okay, you can see what the recipe calls for. So we're gonna start off by making some nutrient broth. And for this particular lab, we've already measured out the amount of powder for you. So really all you're gonna have to do is add some water to it. But let's kind of go over the calculations. Okay, so I have included this on my board here, so hopefully you can see this. For most preparations, it tells you how much media you're going to need to make a, a whole entire liter worth of media. For this particular uh, nutrient broth, it tells us we're going to need to measure out 13 grams of the powder and add it to one liter of water. Well, we don't really need to make a whole entire liter of media for this particular lab. So for this lab, you would be working in groups of four students. And so I have the calculation here. We're gonna have four students working together and we're gonna make eight broths, okay? And they're about five mils a piece. So if you do eight broths times five mils, we're gonna need to make about 40 milliliters of the media. So rather than making an entire liter, we're only gonna make 40 milliliters. So now we have to do a little bit of the calculation. So if I have 13 grams for one liter, which is the same thing as 1,000 milliliters, I need to find out how many grams I need to make 45 milliliters. Now notice I upped the amount from 40 to 45, so I added about five mils to account for evaporation since you're gonna be boiling the media, okay? So when I do this calculation, it's basically uh, cross multiplication. So 13 times 45, and you divide it by 1,000, and that tells me that I'm gonna need to measure out 0.585 grams of the powder and add it to uh, 45 milliliters of water. So again, that part has already been done for you somewhat in that it's already been measured out the amount of media that you need. So the next step in this is very simple in that you would just measure out 45 milliliters of water. Now normally if we're working in a lab, we'd use a graduated cylinder instead of using a beaker, but I don't have a graduated cylinder at the house, so this will have to suffice. So all you do is you just take your water and after you've measured it out, you would then add it to the powder, okay, in the Erlenmeyer flask, it's already been measured out. Normally the best thing to do is just to kind of mix it up a little bit to get the media off of the bottom, because you don't want it to stick to the bottom. And then the next step would be to add a stir bar and put it on a magnetic uh, stir plate, hot, hot plate, okay? And so in doing so, you can see I've mixed it up pretty good, I would then, if I had a hot plate magnetic stirrer, I would then put it on that and allow for it to come to a boil. Now you need to keep a close eye on it so that way it doesn't boil over. An alternative to this is you could put it in the microwave. 
the main thing is that you get it to where it's nice and boiling so we know that it's all been mixed up, okay? So let's assume that we've already got it boiling and it's nice and ready to go. Obviously, when you're doing this in the lab, you would want to use some type of a pot holder or a hot plate uh, or a glove or something so that you don't burn your hand. So we're going to go ahead and take this out and assume that it's ready to go. And so the next step would be we need to pipette our media into the test tube. Now again, you notice that you're going to be pipetting five mils into eight separate test tubes. So I'm just going to use one to give you kind of a demo. So you have a pipette here, and what you would do is you would connect it to uh, the uh, pipetter here. And what you're going to do is you're essentially going to measure out five mils. Okay, so I'm going to kind of come around here to give you kind of a close up. You can see that it goes from zero uh, or five all the way up to zero. Uh, so that's going to be essentially, if you measure all the way out up to here, it's going to give you five mils. Okay. So relatively simple, simple, okay? Uh, the other thing you have to imagine is that you have a Bunsen burner here, which I obviously don't have at home, but what you're gonna do is you're going to want to flame the mouth of the Erlenmeyer flask before you do this, again, to ensure aseptic technique. You are going to take your pipette in here, and then all you do is you just pipette five mils, okay? You can set your flask back down, and then you're going to want to pipette it into the test tube. Now, since we are autoclaving these or sterilizing these afterwards, it is quite all right to set the lid down. In any other situation, you wouldn't want to do that because you're essentially contaminating uh, your uh, media. But in this case, we're going to autoclave after the fact. So I just am going to empty out the contents into the test tube, okay? and then I can essentially uh, put the cap back on. Now again, another good practice is to flame before and after you put the cap on. Again, it just ensures aseptic technique, okay? Now, that being said, like I mentioned, we will autoclave them after the fact, and so they will be sterilized afterwards. So you would just do the same procedure into eight separate test tubes, and then you have officially prepared your broths, okay? So uh, now we're going to take a short break uh, and I'm going to show you how to make the nutrient auger. Okay, welcome back. So now I'm going to show you how to do the nutrient auger preparation. It is virtually the same as doing the nutrient broth preparation, except remember that with nutrient auger, it's going to solidify at room temperature. So again, it's very important that we boil this to make sure that the auger goes into solution and then it's nice and uh, homogenous, that it's thoroughly mixed up. So in this case, uh, we do have a calculation as well that you find on the bottle that tells you how much uh, powder you need to weigh out and how much you need to add to the water in order to make the media. So in looking at the nutrient auger preparation, okay, what you see here is for nutrient auger preparation, the bottle calls for 28 grams per one liter. So again, you don't really need to make a whole entire liter worth of media. You only need to make what, what is absolutely needed for your experiment. So in this case, uh, again, one liter is equivalent to 1,000 milliliters, and we're gonna be working in groups of four. And so in this case, we are going to be making slants and we're going to be making plates because both of those are solid forms of media. So we can actually make up one batch of media and split it to where we use some of it for slants and some of it for the actual plates. So in this case, we're gonna make eight slants and we typically do about seven mils per slant, which means we need to make 56 milliliters of uh, media for our slants. For our plates, we're gonna do eight plates and we actually pour the plates so it's gonna be approximately 20 mils per plate. And so that'll give you 160 mils is what you're gonna to need to make the plates. So the total amount that we need to make is gonna be around 216 milliliters. Again, we're gonna add a little bit to account for evaporation for when we boil. So we're gonna make uh, 220 milliliters. So again, you want to do the calculation to find out how many grams you need to weigh out uh, in order to prepare the media. So if I have 28 grams is equivalent to 1,000 milliliters, 
and I'm trying to find out X amount of grams, a little bit of algebra here, how many grams I need for 220 milliliters. Well, again, we just do a little bit of cross mul multiplication. So 28 grams times 220, and then you divide that by 1,000. So when I do this calculation, it tells me I need to weigh out 6.16 grams per 220 milliliters of water. So again, I already have the powder measured out. And if you were doing this in the lab, we would already have this sitting out and ready for you to where all you would have to do is add the water and then of course boil it. Uh, so once again, I don't have a graduated cylinder, so I'm using a beaker. I have measured out 220 milliliters of water. So I would add that to the powder. And once again, I'm just gonna kind of gently swirl it so I can try to get as much of it off the bottom as possible. Now, keep in mind, if you're working in the lab, you should have a hot plate magnetic stir, uh, which means you would put a little magnet inside the media and you would put it on top of the hot plate and that way it would actually boil the media while it's stirring it. So it's kind of a handy little device to have in the lab. So let's assume that we have this all mixed up, okay? And we're gonna put it on our hot plate magnetic stir. We are going to get it to where it's nice and boiling. Now, the one difference between the broth and the auger is the auger tends to boil over quite rapidly. So I always tell students, you have to keep a very close eye on this because once it starts rising, then it's looking to boil over. And so you have to be very careful uh, when you're uh, boiling the auger solutions. So again, you can use the microwave, uh, but the hot plate magnetic stir is really more recommended than using a microwave. All right, so let's assume that we have this all nice and mixed up. And so now we are going to pipette uh, the media into our slants. So same process, we're just using seven mils instead of five mils. Now, at this point in time, I only have a five mil pipette, so I'm gonna need to do a little bit more than five mils, because I want to do seven in each of my slants. So once again, if I had a Bunsen burner, I would flame the mouth of the Erlenmeyer flask before using my pipette. I would then go in and I would pipette five mils, just like I did before. Once again, your slants are gonna be autoclaved afterwards, so they will be sterilized afterwards. So this is the one and only time you can actually put your lid down on the table. Flame the mouth of the test tube. Go ahead and add five mils. And then you're going to want to go back in and get two more mils of media to be added to the slant, okay? Because we do seven mils in a slant, okay? Uh, once again, I'm gonna flame it, and then I'll go ahead and put my cap back on, which it's not necessary to do that, but it's just good practice, okay? Because again, we're gonna sterilize afterwards. So I would do this same procedure and go ahead and fill up eight more test tubes because we're making eight slants. Now, the plates are going to be a little bit different because in the case of the plates, we actually autoclave the media first and then we pour the plates afterwards. So that being said, when you pour the plates, you really have to be aseptic because you're not gonna sterilize them after the fact. So once I have my broths ready and my slants ready, what I will do is I will take the remainder of the media, okay, what I'm gonna use to make my plate, and I'm just gonna very loosely cover it with foil, okay? The other thing I'm gonna make sure of is that my caps are relatively loose because we are about to place these in the autoclave. And when you place them in the autoclave, if they're too tight, it will cause the uh, test tubes to explode. So we are going to go take these to the autoclave and we will autoclave them. And then when they're done autoclaving, I'm gonna show you how to pour some plates. Okay, so we're back and now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how you pour plates. And so in doing so, Again, since we autoclaved and now we're coming back to the lab bench, we want to go ahead and sterilize our lab bench one more time because again, we have already sterilized our media. So it's incredibly important that we are being very, very sterile as much as possible 
to not contaminate our plates, okay? Now, I have already washed my hands. The other thing that I am missing that I do not have at my house is I would have a Bunsen burner going uh, to make sure that we have a flame going because the flame will help kind of sterilize the area of any airborne microbes. In addition, you're going to need to pass the flask through the flame prior to pouring. So I'm gonna take my plates, okay? And of course, you're gonna have eight of these because we'd be making eight, okay, if we were doing this in class. And notice I'm just gonna set them down kind of as close to me as possible, okay? I don't want them way out here because that makes it harder to pour. And of course, I don't want them too close to the edge because they may fall off. Now, when looking at the plate, and I'm gonna give a little bit of a close up here, you'll notice, and, and it's okay that I open this, I wouldn't normally do this, but you'll notice the plate has a lid on top and then this portion is the base. Students do this, uh, well, it happens, okay, in that they pour the media into the lid of the tube instead of the base. So just make sure that the lid is on top and the base of the plate is on the bottom, okay, before doing this. So we're gonna set our plates up. Again, these plates have been sterilized, so they haven't been opened. So again, do not open them until it's time to pour. So the next thing would be, I'm gonna take my media out of the autoclave. And so we're gonna assume it's very hot because it just came out of the autoclave. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very gently remove the foil, okay? And then what I would do is I would pass this through the Bunsen burner flame, and then I would very carefully lift the lid and just pour the media into the plate, okay? And then I'm gonna cover it back up as quickly as possible. I would flame the flask again, and then I'm just gonna gently put the foil back on the top. Now, a couple of things I want to make note of, okay? First off, you should have noticed that I used the lid as I was pouring the plate as a shield. We don't wanna open the lid all the way because airborne contaminants are gonna get down into the plate and then your media is gonna be contaminated. The other thing I would mention is normally, if I was pouring plates, I would not be talking because again, when you're talking, you're also basically getting microorganisms in your media. So again, good thing is when you're doing media, you don't talk, uh, you basically just focus on what you're doing and try to prevent any contamination as much as possible. So I'm gonna show you one more time, except this time I'm not gonna say anything so you can see how it would be done. So I would flame it. The main thing is making sure that you're using them uh, and implementing aseptic technique and trying to be as sterile as possible. So when asked about how much do you pour, well, you want it to be about this thick in the plate. Okay, you don't want to pour too little because it'll dry out, but if you pour too much, then essentially uh, it will touch the lid and possibly risk contamination. So once your plates are done, again, they're in the form of a liquid. So what you would need to do is you would need to allow them to sit and cool so that way the auger would solidify. Once the plates are cooled, we invert them, turn them upside down, and we store them until we're ready to use them. So hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of a demonstration, a virtual in-home demonstration of how you would prepare nutrient broth and nutrient auger.